Now, let's demonstrate more web application security. Yes, we're now focusing on AWS WAF or AWS Web Application Firewall. We will first test our hack site, our vulnerable web application. We will test if it's vulnerable to web application brute force attack using automated Python script. We're going to update our existing web ACL. Well, web ACL, basically a policy configuration in our AWS WAF. We will add a new rule and let's see if it can prevent web application brute force attack. I'm here in our EC2 console page and I also have three other tabs. But before we go to those other tabs, let's go first to our load balancer configuration. As you can see, we have Stix ELB, the only available load balancer or ELB configuration. And um, the second tab is our existing web ACL. We already created this web ACL named web poll from the previous video. And as I click this, we go to rules and there's only one existing rule, which is XSS protect. The third tab, this is our web application and we are accessing it via Stix ELB, our elastic load balancer. And the fourth tab, this is just a documentation, an existing AWS documentation. Now, first thing that we will do is we're going to test our web application brute force attack using Python script. That is the first attempt. No rules yet. Or the only rule we have in our web ACL is the XSS protect rule that we created from the previous video. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, well, I have just logged in to my Kali Linux and we're going to run Python script. Yes, I already specified the URL. Let me go to the um, Python script. I just use nano. As you can see, this is the URL, our Stix ELB. I also specified the username that we will brute force and this is test user okay and this is a python brute force script and for those who want to learn how to build these check the course python and Cybersecurity web attacks below now i'm gonna exit because what we want to do is we just want to run this python script so i will just specify python followed by the name of the python script and i'm gonna hit enter and as you can see it it's now starting to brute force test user this specific username to our web application again sticks elb dash 807 yada yada okay now if i go all right there you go so it only took a few seconds like 20 to 30 seconds and we have retrieved the password for this username test user and let's test if i click sign in test user test one two three and uh, there you go. So it is successful. We uh, retrieved the correct password for our specific username test user. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our web policy, uh, web ACL, and then I'm going to click add rules. I'm going to select add manage rule groups. There you go. Okay. And as you can see, there are many managed rule groups. And some of these are coming from other vendors such as Imperva, Fortinet, F5, Cloudbrick, etc. But we want to just simply use the built-in AWS managed rule groups. Now, we have multiple options here. And um, yeah, multiple options. One for SQL database, POSIX, PHP application. And under paid rule groups, we have account creation and fraud prevention. We have bot control, but what we want to enable is this, the second one, account takeover prevention. And why is that? Because this is specific to brute force. You see under description, it says provide protection for your login page against stolen credentials, stuffing attacks, brute force logging attempts. There you go. Brute force logging attempt. This is what we want to prevent and enable in our um, WAF or AWS WAF. So all we need to do is simply enable this uh, rule groups. Okay, you see that it is now enabled and uh, I'm going to click edit. And as you can see, there are no configurations yet. The configuration are very simple. 
We just want to fill some of these fields. The first one would be the login path. As you can see, it says here, a sample slash web slash login. So basically, this is the path that we want to specify. And this path is for specific uh, the login page. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click sign out. And uh, as you can see, we were redirected back to the login page. As you can see, this is our URL followed by slash login. This is what we want to um, provide. Okay. What else? The payload type, this is not JSON. This is form encoded. And the field names. Now, we know, or at least I know, that the field names of this username and password is username and password. Now, if you're not sure, we can right click this page and click view page source. Now, I will just enter username and password. There you go. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do first is I will add this rule, but make sure that everything is allowed. So you see this rule subset here. I'm going to make this allow first before I enable one or few of them. Okay. And I'm going to click add rules now. I'm going to click save. And there you go. We have our second rule. The name is AWS, AWS Managed Rules ATP rule set. Now, since I override allow, if I rerun my Python brute force.py, our web application brute force attack, we will see again the password test123. And why is that? Because we created a rule, but we didn't um, enable blocking of those uh, subset rules. See, password is test123. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this rule. I'm going to click edit. And uh, what I would like to do here is instead of overwrite allow, all of these rules subset uh, are currently allowed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to block one of these subset rules. And how would you know which one to block or to enable blocking? Now, there's a documentation here called how can AWS WAF help prevent brute force login attacks? And um, there are many resolutions here, but there's this specific part, enable ATP manage rule groups. Okay. And uh, there are subset of rules in ATP rule group that will help prevent brute force attacks. And um, it shows one, two, three, four, five, six, six of these. This includes volumetric IP high, attribute password traversal, volumetric session, missing credentials, etc. Now, what we want to enable is the first one. Why? Because this actually matches the type of attack that we were doing. Inspect high volume of requests sent from an individual IP address. And uh, I will go back to our WAF configuration or our rule configuration. And you see this? Everything is allowed for now. What I want to do is I'm going to select override to block on this specific rule set. Okay. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click save rule now. I'm going to click save again. There you go. Now, I'm going to rerun our Python script. Check password for username test user. And we didn't change anything. Okay. Only that specific um of that subset rule. And let's see. It takes a little longer compared from the previous test. And there you go. You see what happened? It just stopped. If you compare it from the previous two, after half a minute, more or less, we see this second line. Congratulations, you hacked the admin account. And then it shows us the password test one, two, three. Now what happened is it didn't add it a new line. Okay. It just stopped because we have successfully prevent brute force attack. This is just the basics of AWS web application firewall or AWS WAF blocking web application brute force attacks in the next videos. We will be looking at more AWS WAF features. And, of course, more web application hacking.